Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I'm Darren, I'm your host, and today I have a couple of great guests. I have Chef AJ Scheller and Chef Gerard Barthelone from Cuisine Solutions and La Crea. And we're going to talk about International Sous Vide Day coming up this Tuesday, January 26th. All right, I'll be right back with the chefs. Smoking, grilling, getting hot and hotter, sous vide and chilling. Hey all, I want to introduce you to a company I just started working with, Fresh Jack's Organic Spices out of Jacksonville, Florida. They're a small, family-run company that's fast-growing. I've tried a bunch of their different seasoning blends and spices, and I can tell you they are all fresh. All organic. None of them contain artificial flavors or sweeteners. None of them have anti-caking agents or preservatives. They all taste like they were just made for you yesterday. Check them out, guys. They're on Amazon in the link below. They have different sample packs, different blends. Like I said, they also have the individual seasonings and spices as well. Fresh Jack's Organic Spices. Check them out, guys. I love them. Welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I am Darren. I am your host, of course, and I have some great guests today. I've had AJ on before, but Gerard, this is the first time you've been on. I have AJ Scheller and Gerard Berthelone. Did I say it right? Yes, that sounds great. <laughs> and uh, they are from Cuisine Solutions and CREA, which is, CREA is the Culinary Research and Education Academy, which pretty much... Um, the masters of sous vide they uh, uh pretty much uh have perfected it and keep continue to teach it and have done some amazing things with sous vide and um, i'm really glad to have them on and we're going to talk a little bit about what crea does what cuisine solution does and then what international sous vide day is and that's coming up in on tuesday uh this tuesday uh, and we're going to talk about that and First, I'm going to introduce AJ, because ladies first, AJ Scheller. Who are you? What do you do? Thank you, Darren. It's great to be back, and thanks for inviting us again. Um, so I am the executive chef of CREA, uh, as you were describing, and we are uh, part of the Cuisine Solutions family. Um, we're the division that does the education, consulting, and sort of high-level R&D. And... Um, you know, we have uh, trainings uh, several times throughout the year. We also have them online. Uh, you can check them out on our website, lacrea.com. And we also do a good amount of consulting as well and um, travel all around. Uh, we have two, two locations, one in Washington, DC, and then in Paris that was established in 1991. And our chief scientist, Bruno Gousseau, is really the pioneer of the sous vide cooking technique um, and established CREA and then joined the Cuisine Solutions family to help um, with our uh, production and R&D and um, all the amazing products that we've done. And really, we're a top resource uh, for chefs all around the world. Well, I'm pulling up the website there. I had a issue still setting up my new computer here. So this is the CREA website. And um, anybody that's interested in finding out all that they offer and what they do, uh, it's lacrea, L-E-C-R-E-A dot com. And um, it's got all the information in there you could ever want on what CREA does and all the courses that they offer and all the consulting. They do a lot of consulting with uh restaurants and food, um, any big, you know, uh, industrial food uh, providers, hospitals, hotels, all that. So, and what's Cuisine Solutions, Gerard, and who are you? Well, uh, thank you for having us. I'm uh, Gerard Bertolon. I'm the CSO, uh, Chief Strategy Officer, but uh, I'm a chef. Um, I work in two, three star Michelin in France. Um, uh, work a little bit uh, with sous vide in uh, 1982 when we were upon the the Orient Express, the train. I had the chance to work with uh, Michel Ranvier, who worked at Trois Gros, and we were doing sous vide, and uh, we were not doing the proper sous vide, if I can say. Um, mm -hmm. With what I know today, uh, we made a lot of mistakes, but uh, that's when I started. Then I saw all the top chefs in France, Robuchon, uh, Gerard. Uh, working with sous vide and I said well those are my mentors those are the people who are 
I'm looking uh, to um, for inspiration, for direction. You know, you, you see those top chef. They are like a, when you're young kid, they, they, they look like a half god. And uh, <laughs> they were all doing sous vide. So I said, well, if they are doing sous vide, I need to do sous vide to get better. You know, it's easy or, or you can change your recipes, your recipe better than the other guy. But how can you be more precise, more consistent, more, you know, to get to a higher level and, and keep this level? So uh, I uh, joined Cuisine Solution. I thought I will be here for uh, one year and uh, go back to <laughs> New York. And uh, this year is going to be 32 years with, uh, with Cuisine Solution. And it's been a lot of fun because um, not only with Cuisine Solution, but with Crea, we train 48 three stars. And so this part was fun as a chef also. And also as a Cuisine Solution, we are the world leader of um, producing sous vide. Um, so now we have six plants around the world, one in France, one in Thailand, and uh, four in the U.S. We just opened our last plant in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and it's a little plant. It's 320,000 square feet, <laughs> the biggest sous vide plant in the world. Mm. Um, so sous vide uh, makes a lot of sense for a lot of people from uh, many reasons. We'll go back to, uh, to that, but that's what Cuisine Solution is all about, cooking from uh, protein, vegetable sources. And uh, like our name saying, we have a solution with us. We can uh, give a lot of solution for hotel, plane, and restaurant, and many other hospitality industries. Well, and with this whole uh, pandemic we've been going through for almost a year now, it seems like it's really jump-started a lot of requests and um, of people needing, you know, these type of pre-made, pre-packaged, you know, high quality meals um, to where, you know, especially like for delivery service or what have you, where you don't, you can't have, you know, as much staff together and all that. So how, how has this whole pandemic affected both you guys' uh, business here? You started, Jane? Sure. So, you know, we even before the pandemic hit, we were um, helping our, our clients with helping to um, increase, uh, you know, food safety and consistency, but at the same time, reducing labor and waste. And that is just exactly what sous vide does if you incorporate it into your menus um, in any of your, you know, sort of restaurant concepts, hotels, um, any food service establishment, really. When the pandemic came along, uh, those projects that we were working on, we discovered that people, of course, are more concerned about their food safety, but also it's really difficult to be able to retain staff. Um, there's not as many opportunities to find skilled labor. And um, not only that, but because, uh, you know, most um, chefs shifted to doing uh, meal delivery services, um, being able to take their uh, menus and knowing that um, they can take a prepared, uh, precisely cooked sous vide product. Um, it has a longer shelf life, but also the, the products that are sous vide in advance um, are simply seasoned. So the chefs had more of an opportunity to uh, create their own customization, really make it theirs. And it, it just all tied together and everybody was looking for these solutions and uh, good examples of uh, projects that we had started on were, you know, some hotel groups. And then also we had already started working with Taffer's Tavern, uh, which opened in Alpharetta, Georgia this year. And the safe dining system that they have set up really fell in line with what everybody was looking for as a solution. So when you incorporate sous vide into the menu, not only do you, uh, you know, have a chance to operate your kitchens, uh, with uh, limited staff, but also you have a lot of room for um, flexibility, creativity, and then you know that the product that you have, the center of the plate item, if it is a sous vide product, it always is going to uh, be prepared and precisely cooked in advance to the exact uh, juiciness and tenderness and texture that you're looking for. And it's safe, of course, because it stays in the pouch for the entire process. So it's fully pasteurized. You don't have to worry about any other cross contamination. There's minimal touching. And then also the menu is based off of uh, essentially having fully, fully cooked, uh, precisely cooked sous vide product uh, 
you know, without having raw material in the kitchen. So there's less of a chance of cross contamination in that sense as well. And then no matter how long it takes to prepare the food sous vide, I mean, if you have a, a product that has a lot of uh, collagen and connective tissue that you need to break down, it can take um, several hours, even days. Um, and then other products that are leaner, it doesn't take as long. So regardless of how um, long it takes the sous vide process, we take that labor and we prepare it for you. We're like the comi, if you will. And then when you receive it um, at the store level, all you have to do is determine what the recipe is for pickup. And we found that all of the menus that we've been working on lately, whether it was for Taffer's or uh, the DAC kitchen in, in New York, um, it's four minutes or less average of like two and a half minutes pickup. So regardless of what the product is um, with the type of um, service that we would recommend, it really helps speed that up, which is very helpful for, for delivery consistency and then making sure that of course it's a very safe and minimally touched product. Now I want people to understand that these aren't their typical frozen dinners or boil and bag stuff that you see in your uh, supermarket, correct? <laughs> yeah, we, we have to look at market too differently. Um, you know, of course, it's a high quality product. You know, we, we cannot, you know, we, we hear chef talking, oh, I, I use the best product available or something. We have no choice. Everybody who worked with sweet before will we, realize that it enhances all the flavor in the bag. So if you put a good product, you're going to have an outstanding product. But if you put an item like shrimp who are not that fresh, when you open the bag, it's going to stink. So we have to take the best product available to, uh, to make it amazing. And looking at retail, people are more looking for meals. So we do lamb shank with a sauce, also buko with a sauce. But to go back to the point that AJ brought, we, for the hotel, uh, people want, we want them to keep the creativity. And that's very important in restaurant, in, in hotel and, and stadium, because we do a lot of things in stadium and casinos, in, even in an airline um, and first class. I mean, uh, we try, in having a raw product, we have a protein or product, but very, very simple, salt, pepper. We try to just have a product with perfectly cooked, right texture, right colors. And just bring that to the chef. We, we are the line cook. And uh, that mm -hmm. has been a, a helping us to succeed. Because when I start 32 years, you know, I would have the chef like that. And they didn't know about sous vide and say, really, you want me to serve food in a bag to my customers? You know, they didn't know about it. So it's been a long journey where we had to educate uh, the customer and then... Um, you know, show them that, you know, the top chef in the world were using this technique because it was much more precise and much more consistent. And uh, <clears throat> that's how we grow. You know, when I started, we were five. Um, you know, we, I was a chef. We had a little lab kitchen and I was uh, setting up all the new recipe. Six months later, we opened the plant. And uh, now just in the U.S., we're over 1,500 uh, employees. But the growth has been, you know, in America, if, if you have a good concept or something, either you grow or you die. And people are looking at our product and they're, it's a true um, tools to help us deliver the, the, a great product and to bring a great experience to our customers. So, you know, when, when they see us coming, they're like, oh, are they taking my job or something like that? And when they realize yeah. and when they start working on it, it's like, where's the sous vide? How come... Uh, you know, the distributor didn't bring in time. I have my, you know, they, they see it, they, it, they see us as a, like I say, as a, as a, somebody to help them, not uh, to remove right. them. And before COVID, it was a huge challenge for all our customers to find labor because the business was booming everywhere and people were, you know, couldn't find enough, uh, enough uh, staff and qualified staff. And, you know, working in the kitchen is long hours, early days. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not talking about home cook because mainly what we sell for um, cuisine solutions is for the you know, hotel, restaurant, so forth. And um, we were already a, a, a great tool. And now during COVID, you know, you don't want to bring, you know, usually you have small kitchen, you have five, six people in the kitchen, shoulder to shoulder. You cannot do that. You have to make sure, um, you know, for the safety of your staff, you know, 
so bring some of those items, you can uh, you can do the same amount of, uh, of cover with three people and before you needed to have uh, six of them. Yeah, and to me, I, I, I don't currently work in the restaurant business, but I did when I was younger. So I kind of understand um, what you're what you were talking about dealing with when you got the chefs that you know kind of poo-pooed it in the beginning but now they look at it to go what you know what is the most that you contribute to that meal you know as the chef it is that seasoning at the end the sauce that you put on it the presentation the plating it's not really the cooking it part you know <laughs> the initial cooking part so if you can take that step out and just, you know, focus on what you're really, really good at and what, you know, is going to separate you from everybody else. It, it just makes sense. And since, you know, with sous vide, you can cook it to that perfect temperature and have a perfect product and you're using the, the most, uh, the better quality ingredients. Why wouldn't you do that? The most expense in a restaurant is food cost and labor. So if you can chop those two things down and still have an excellent product, I mean, I, I don't know why you wouldn't do it. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's not about, um, you know, depending on what you want to achieve. Are you, yeah, you cannot find people or are you trying to raise the bar in your restaurant and do a better product? So it's readjusting, keeping the same labor, but refocusing the labor on a different place. So instead of braising and cooking five, six things at a time and just putting something on the plate fast, now you can finish right. it and spend more time because today, Everything has to be Instagramable, you know? Everybody take pictures, everything. So <laughs> part of the success of the restaurant, you have to have beautiful picture because you have thousands of people who think they are, uh, they are uh, you know, food, food journalists or something. You have to deliver a great quality. You have to deliver a beautiful plate. You have so many new things. The way a restaurant has to manage itself to grow is, has nothing to do with uh, the same thing 20 years ago where... Everybody will read the Washington Post and New York Times, who's the best restaurant. So now you have to really, really, uh, you know, uh, raise your game and, and be consistent and be bring beautiful play to, to your customer. So you can keep the same stuff, but put them more about finishing touch and being perfect, all of that. And um, it's another tool. There's so many solutions on, on sous vide. It's not about reduction of staff or sometimes you don't have enough space or sometimes like, that first tavern, you know, the, the goal was to build a kitchen without hood or anything like that, having product already. I mean, you cut the hood in a kitchen, you save $150,000 or $200,000. So when you're going to open your restaurant, you're like, well, I can put this money in the front. I can do so many different things. So sous vide can bring you so many different solutions. Definitely. And the Instagram, uh, uh, Facebook advertising that restaurants get for free is a big thing <laughs> today. Yeah. So, I mean, so that, if that plate comes out looking beautiful and somebody snaps a picture on their phone, sends it out to, you know, 150 different people, they get more business in. Yeah, so you, have, you have thousands of PR people working <laughs> for you. <laughs> exactly. I'm guilty. I do it all the time. So. <laughs> well, we like so, to share it. I, I, we all do it. It's part of our new way of communicating with our friend with with everybody might have a little ego in it too you yeah. know and look at what look where i'm eating look where i am look, <laughs> you know exactly. what part of the world i am you exactly. know so um it's fun and it's not here to uh, it's here to stay so, so really the restaurant business have to adapt and and uh, and see what is what the best tool they have to uh, to deliver what the new customer and the younger customer are looking for yeah, technology has changed all industries and, and the way we do a lot of things, that's for sure. So speaking of that, so the C CS DAC, let's talk about that. Now, this is something that you guys have rolled out here in the last um, six months or so. Is that? Oh, le less than that. We started three weeks ago. Oh, three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about what this is. And I know you're working with, um, you're working with, uh, what's the name of that? Uh, place yeah uh, we we have we opened our first kitchen inside of prêt à manger the goal the goal is to um uh use an existing location and most of the restaurants are uh, have kitchen plus now is even more than ever we have uh, they have enough space to do uh food for their restaurant but they don't have to stay to only one type of kitchen you know if you're a french restaurant you can still have somebody in the back working 
and uh, doing a, a dark kitchen or ghost kitchen, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Chipotle call it a digital kitchen. Um, we, we call it a dark kitchen because it's a dark assembled kitchen. Many uh, chefs who have created those uh, dark or ghost kitchen still cook everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. Our goal was to, you know, not to uh, open the, the dark and manage the dark kitchen, but it's to show also that big corporation or smaller restaurant with, with our item, they can create four or five here. We have five different or six different concepts in one restaurant plus Prêt à Manger is still doing their food. So we really in a tiny kitchen, you have seven types of, uh, of, of food. And uh, when Prêt à Manger has some of the best location in New York, you're only, what, five minutes away, 10 minutes away from, uh, from your customer. So the integrity of the food is going to be great when you arrive to the, to the customer. It's not going to be barely warm or you have to repop it in the in oven or something like that. But the, the assembled part of it, it's also a solution. If you cook everything from scratch, it's a nightmare. You take an osobuco mm -hmm. and you need what? 20 ingredients between the carrot, between everything. And imagine now you have six concepts, you have whatever, 40 dishes. And then what you need, you need a truckload of ingredients in the backyard, in your back of your restaurant, just to, it, it's impossible to manage. And then you have waste, you have so many different things. And here's the same thing. We use the same chicken in the same six concepts. We just top it, we glaze it, we, we do a different sauce. Uh, different rating, you know, because talking of going back to sous vide, you know, it's not, you know, when I started, we had to eat in, in the bag. Oh, no, no, everybody has to eat in the bag. Today, our customer, 90% of, of the product is rated outside of a, a bag in a turbo chef because it can be ready in two minutes. It's seared. You have a mixture of oven flow. Um, you have some uh, microwave, so you can have beautiful, crispy product. You can put in the fryer. You know, people are like, oh, fryer is going to be so greasy. I said, no, the product is already cooked. So when you put in a fryer, you just creep outside. The protein already sealed. There is no fat going inside of the product. You put in the grill, you put in a broiler. You have so many different ways. On top of it, it's ready to eat. So you open the bag, you slice it, you make it in salad, you make it in sandwiches. It's 100% safe. It's fully pasteurized. So you, you, it's safer than a product you cook yourself in your kitchen because through the pasteurization, we have destroyed all um, uh, the vegetative form of bacteria. So it, you cannot find a, a safer product. Well, you can buy canned food, but you know the quality of canned food. <laughs> right. so really, is putting the safety and the quality on, on in a, inside of a pouch. And, you, you, and, and, and really, if it's John or Paul or whatever, you always have the same quality. You, know, you cannot have the same chef cooking the same dish. Uh, but the, the dark kitchen can be, we have six concepts here in a, we launched, but we have more than 11 concepts that we have developed with our team. And um, we have over 35 chefs, people who work from at Daniel Boulou, like AJ, 11 years at Daniel Boulou. We have a, a chef who work, uh, who's really in charge of the DAC uh, project. Sean worked uh, nine years with Jose Andres. He opened six restaurants for Jose. Uh, we have some other chefs who work at El Bulli. We have, we, we have been able to create a team of chefs who are amazing and uh, creating some of, uh, you know, using our sous vide product and creating a, a amazing test, amazing presentation. Um, and as you can see, we have people from South America. We have people from, from Europe. We have, uh, we have two chefs from India. Uh, Dale is uh, focusing on Italian food. So we have put together a, 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 a large amount of chefs who all have different backgrounds. You know, different, they, be, they grew up different parts of the world. They, you know, you can give somebody a French recipe or Indian recipe, they'll get it okay. But then when you ask Arjun or Bashkar to develop our, um, our Indian sauce or something like that, they grew up with it. Yes, they can look in the, in the recipe, but they're like, mm, we need more of this spice, we need that. They'll nail it, you know, like, when, that's something you cannot explain, you know, it's, it's more than, food is more than the recipe, you know, it, it's all those details. So we are 
with this group of chefs, we have been able to create an amazing product, and that's part uh, been a big part of uh, of the growth. You know, our CEO and our chairman says, you know, we are a chef driven company. Um, they come to test test, but they cannot even approve product. Only the chef can approve the product. They come and say, you know, test the food. What do you think? But really, it's all about the chef, and we always raise raise the bar to try to bring the best product available and those products that's what we bring now to to uh to the DAC we have so many uh, products and um, why not deliver directly to the home and um, and the goal with uh, Prêt à Manger is to uh, first New York then Philadelphia and Washington and uh, the big one is London you know they have over uh, 500 stores so we can be within very close proximity to all the, all the customer. Uh, it's easy to train people because, you know, most of the product are, I mean, fully cooked. You have fresh air, you have few items to add to it, but uh, we think it, it's gonna be a new way. And, and people being stuck at home, they get used to order different place, different, you know, different restaurant and eat at the, you know, the comfort of their home. It's uh, something who grew a lot during COVID and it's not something who's going to go away. Yes, people are going to be socializing in restaurants because it's fun. I want to go back to a restaurant, but sometimes you're tired, but you still want good food and you want to place your phone call and you don't want to wait 45 minutes or one hour yeah. to get your food <laughs> because you're hungry. So mm-hmm. with uh, DAC, like uh, AJ said, like we do at uh, Taffer, um, most of the product can be ready within less than four minutes. By the time we pack them, within five minutes, it's done. Um, you know, whatever we use, uh, system of uh, Uber Eat or so forth, we can have the food within 15, 20 minutes to, uh, to your home. So yeah. it's going to be, a, a, it's, it's going to be a disturbing the, the delivery system. And, um, and everybody can, you know, enjoy great food at home. So I want to make sure everybody understands what you're saying, because I know it as Pret A Manager. <laughs> because when I'm up in New York City, that's what you see all of it's Pret A Managers, those little, you know, you know, little restaurants that you, you go into and get your salad and sandwich and they're always packed. So, and uh, they're convenient because they're everywhere in New York City and Manhattan. But that's exactly it. Pret A Manger just means ready to eat. <laughs> yeah, but I always I always call it Pret A managers. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and they have great location, and and yeah. we we approach them because um, their business is all about people. Uh, they are right there in the bottom of a huge building. People come down for lunch. They, they might eat four or five times a week in the Pret a Manger. They'll grab their breakfast in the morning, come back to grab a salad, a warm sandwich, or soup or stew, and their business is pretty light in the, in, the, um, in the evening. And now, you know, most people are working from home so their business is uh, it's way down. So we saw the opportunity, they have the kitchen, they have the location. They were the perfect partner to, to launch uh, this, uh, this program. And, and when the CEO from Pret uh, tells the product and, and so what we're trying to do is like, I'm on our board, where do you want to start, when? <laughs> he wanted to start like right away. Yeah. So we, we need to really <laughs> refine everything, train your staff. Because we're using uh, Prêt à Manger staff, we have some of our chefs who are he- there to coach and to teach. But the goal is to have them do the product because we're not going to leave uh, one of our chefs in all their kitchen. And, right. and the simplicity of a uh, way to reheat a product or, or, or assemble it, uh, that's duplicable pretty easy everywhere around the world in any kind of uh, concept. We have already some other uh, company who wants to, to do different, uh, different concepts. Um, I mean, it's, it's endless the way, you know, how many concepts we can create with our product. Yeah, definitely. Game changing. Hey, all, I want to take a second and talk about Inkbird's brand new instant read thermometer, the IHT-1S. This thing has a lot of great high-end features at a very affordable price. It is 100% waterproof with an IP67 rating, a two to three second ultra fast response time, backlit, fully rechargeable, no batteries to replace, 
this thing has got all the high-end features that you would want in an instant read thermometer. Very durable. So check it out, guys. Check out the Inkbird IHT-1S instant read thermometer. I think you're going to love it. It'll be your go-to instant read from now on. And now back to the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. Now, AJ, let's, uh, you know, Gerard's been talking a lot. <laughs> Well, I'm, were, I'm known not, for that. No, I, I, I <laughs> that's love okay. I'm just that's like great. sitting here and smiling and nodding. <laughs> like I just couldn't agree with everything more. I, well, I want you, to like add really quick to what Gerard was saying about the team of chefs that we have because, um, you know, maybe one day I'll have the same amount of experience in the company as Gerard does. But one of the major reasons why it seemed like such a great idea to to join the family was because I could see there was you know, dozens of chefs that had this like varied experience and really awesome uh, training with top chefs. And it, it really sets, you know, the company apart, I would say. So you wear two hats, right? So you work over at Cuisine Solutions and then you're teaching classes over at Crea. I mean, do you both do that or is it strictly Gerard, you do Cuisine Solutions and then AJ, you kind of work both Crea and Cuisine or do you both do everything? Well, I mean, it's all a collaboration for sure, uh, but I, I'm uh, directing the uh, CREA department in DC and Gerard is um, our leader for all, all of the departments that the chefs run in, in uh, uh, Cuisine Solutions Worldwide, so. So like, we, you have like, just like one, one, yeah, <laughs> one day you do CREA and the next day you're on Cuisine Solutions or? Well, AJ is in charge of, uh, of CREA, all the chef and the scientists, but, um, our main uh, role is CREA, uh, but sometimes, you know, we have, uh, we have um, really VIP customer where we need her and her team to help out because we have some people who are traveling, you know, we, we send chef all over, not just, uh, not just in the US, but the world. Sometimes I could be out with three or four chefs and we have a workshop with United Airlines in, in uh, Frankfurt or, or, or um, you know, different part of the, uh, the world. So, you know, we all help each other, but when we, when it's more calm, AJ is really focusing on giving class, uh, the consulting with our team. And our team is about, you know, we have a team of um, R&D chef who are developing recipes. You know, somebody will come and say, hey, listen, I really want to, uh, to have uh, an octopus on my menu. You know, that's an hotel chain who asked us that. The chef said, you know, I don't want to see my customer coming to sleep in my hotel and then looking at the menu and have a club sandwich and something like, now that's not what we want. We're going out. I said, I, I want them to feel like, oh, look, they have octopus on the menu. Oh, they must have a good chef here. You know, so he said, mm -hmm. I, I want to put an octopus on the, all my, uh, all my um, hotel. And he's the same chef who asked us, I want, I want something, a brisket, a great, you know, and we, we create a Wagyu brisket for him. So we have a team who create, you know, new dishes, a crepe of chef uh, in Alexandria, in our plant. And then we have uh, another group who are more about innovation, about praying uh, to launching new concept, new way. That's how we started to, to you know, to, to slice beef. You know, we slice beef and chicken raw, and then we cook in a bag and we pattern that because usually it's not, Possible. Usually you cook the meat, you slice it, and then you repack it. We, were, we put this process, so it's about innovation. So we have a group of chefs. We have a culinary division who, um, who, who do workshop when people come and creating recipe. Hey, I want to grab and go menu. And they come for the first time. So we'll do a, a 15 course lunch. You know, they, they have <laughs> stuff like a goose when they leave. Can I get them on that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're more than welcome to come and and you'll see, I said, don't eat breakfast, don't. And then you say, well, I can't even dinner. I ate so many food because we call that a capability presentation. We want to show them chicken, lamb, uh, different. So we want to show so many different items at Cuisine Solution. We have over 200 items. Uh, <clears throat> so of course you cannot test that in the, in the first time you have to come back. But we have a group of chefs who are really have their, their work and then when AJ say, hey, we are, can I have two chefs? Because we have our chef, but we need to go faster because uh, they want to open the restaurant right away. They want this project to be finished at this time. So, of course, we all help each other. It's a, like AJ said, we are a big family. Yeah, I know that AJ, you had a lot to do with Taffers, correct? 
Yes, it's it's been over a year since we started collaborating with them at this point. Um, of course, like most other businesses, there was like a bit of delays uh, during the pandemic. But, um, you know, uh, John Taffer came to visit the office um, through our uh, connection with France Mart. Um, and just was blown away by what was possible with the sous vide products. Um, he experienced the presentation, uh, as Jared mentioned, our capabilities presentation. So I'm sure it was quite full after that visit. And then also had a taste of uh, what Crea does because we, our um, incubator kitchen is, is in the building. And whenever we have guests, we like to show them uh, what's next in sous vide, what we can do with training and consulting. Um, and it just made sense, um, you know, so we, we stepped in as essentially the, the chef for the group, um, everything from the kitchen design to the food safety management system to developing the entire menu. Um, I remember the menu started at, I would say over like 120 uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we whittled it down to, um, you know, the, the menu as it is right now, which is still pretty big. But um, as Gerard was mentioning, when you have these products that just have the, the final finishing touch, like in the hands of the cooks, you know, like all of the customization and um, things that really make it, um, you know, craveable, luxurious, like add the extra elements. Um, so, yeah, we, we trained the staff. Um, the first location opened in Alpharetta this year and um, we're, it, they're looking to grow very quickly. So um, yeah, we all help each other out for sure. Uh, another thing that we focus on too in, in Crea is uh, kitchens of the future, we would say. And literally like not one piece of paper in the kitchen anywhere, everything digital. Um, we have the ability in our incubator kitchen to also develop the, the recipes and techniques on the actual uh, uh, rapid cook equipment that's gonna be in the kitchen. So whether it was Taffer's or CS Stack, Dark Assembly Kitchen, um, some other projects that we're working on. So, you know, during, during that um, phase where operators were kind of shifting their focus into how they could uh, move into uh, delivery and kind of cope with the the challenges that the the pandemic kind of brought to us we, we saw just an influx of of interest and people needing resources and and guidance really so yeah definitely i can see i can see it growing even more even after this whole pandemic goes away because it just makes sense to like you said gerard you know if you don't have to have the hood system in a restaurant, that saves you so much money when you're building a new restaurant and, and just expense of having to maintain it and, and get it inspected and all this stuff. I mean, uh, it's just amazing what can be done now where you don't need half the equipment that you would normally need to run a restaurant and, and the labor. So uh, and definitely can see. And the success of a restaurant, we say, is location, location, location. Right. If by any chance you choose a wrong location for whatever reason, you back up a truck, you load everything in it, and you have a room completely empty. <laughs> uh, right. you, you don't have to leave everything behind and say, okay, now I'm bankrupt. And now you do that, and then you find a new location. And uh, it's, but, it's you know quite amazing. The, the new opportunities were not just for professionals, um, the type of uh, chefs or groups that would visit Cuisine Solutions or Crea. We just saw a huge increase in interest in sous vide cooking at home. I mean, it's, it's already very popular, like um, I would say like around 2010 to 12, like it was just blew up all over, you know, social media. A lot of books were published, a lot of websites, um, a lot of new circulators coming out, really opening up the opportunity for people to cook sous vide at home. And um, with, with that uh, sort of, change in, in interest in, in home cooking, or as I would call it, sous vide enthusiasts, because uh, the home cooks that are doing sous vide, they, they tend to be like a little bit more uh, into the details. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe not crazy, but just like pretty um, invested in it, right? Like you, you want to learn and you also want to learn how to do uh, things safely and properly. And so we saw like an increase in our online training as well, because that's uh, the... Um, 
ability to see what you would take in our in-person three-day course, but in the comfort of your own home and at your own pace. Uh, and then also uh, things like this, right? Collaborating um, with, with you, Darren. Um, and, you know, we met through um, Dave from PolyScience and, you know, we had uh, the opportunity to, to have some fun during the International Sous Vide Association summits. Um, and then, of course, leading into International Sous Vide Day this week, it's just the the ability and the um, actually the even the uh, people are working from home now, right? So their schedules are opening up. They have a little bit more time uh, to you know learn and and attend uh, digital events and webinars and things like that. So um, you know our our connection and like web and network within the the you know sous vide enthusiast community has grown a lot as well. Yeah, I'm I'm one of those guys that. I always want to know the why and the how, not just show me and, and I'll, I'll repeat it. Uh, you know, I like to understand why things work, why things uh, are the way they are. And I think the people like me and Jason and Mike and from the you know, International Sous Vide Association, that's what we, we thrive on is, you know, teach me, but also explain to me why. Don't just say, well, you have to just cut, you know, do it this way, you know, and then don't worry about the why and the how, you know, I love to dive deep into it. And then I like to take it and simplify it for people that are trying to learn because you can't just go, I see it all the time in the Facebook groups, go, go read the, the Baldwin book. Well, the Baldwin book is, you know, not really for a beginner. <laughs> There's a lot of words, a lot of things that he does in there that people get their eyes crossed and they give up on it. So I try to kind of, I don't want to say dumb it down. I, I try to simplify it so people can understand it and then take baby steps and then get more and more as they go along because when I first looked at it I my eyes crossed a little bit but then it made me want to dive deep into it but a lot of people they get scared of it they'll try I see too many people online go I tried using sous vide to cook a steak once and it didn't turn out good so I gave up and it's like you can't do that with any kind of cooking method even you know I, I did a lot of barbecue early on in my my life and with barbecue, you can't even just go, I tried to cook a brisket and it turned out bad. So I'm never going to do it again. I mean, because it's, you know, sophisticated, you got to do it a certain way and you, you know, it all depends on the meat. So you got to keep going at it and practicing and, and learning more. You can't just give up at one time. So let's talk about international sous vide day, because I want to get that in before we run out of time. I know you guys are, I got some stuff going on today. So International sous vide day is on this coming Tuesday. And what what's what do you guys got going on? Jam packed day full of sous vide. A lot of uh, guest stars uh, from from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, we've got just a roster of really great, um, you know, um, people that you can watch. We've got um, chefs from Thailand. Um, we have uh, Chef Gerard is doing a segment. Maybe Gerard, you want to talk about that with our, our you know, friends within the, the hotel groups? Uh, well, we try to touch any part of, um, of, uh, of the industry at our home, you know, who's using sous vide, what kind of segment. So we're going to be starting at uh, 8 a.m. with the uh, International Sous Vide Association, and it's going to be a podcast worldwide. Um, with Del Prentice from Australia, with uh, uh, York from uh, Denmark, uh, from uh, Canada, uh, US, uh, and then we we're gonna we have four chefs: one from Thailand, one from France, one uh, a lady from uh, uh, the US, and um, and uh, one from Dubai. They have a uh, thirty minutes uh, recipe, so you can learn uh, a new recipe from somebody around the world. We have uh, Daniel Boulou and Cal Connetton and Grace Ramirez talking about uh, celebrity chef, you know, how they react during COVID and how sous vide helped them in their career when they start. You know, Daniel has been, uh, it was one of the first training we did with him and his team when we started in the US. Um, so you have a lot of Cal Connetton, uh, Bruno and I went to the Fat Duck in London and Kyle, uh, you know, he has single thread in Sonoma he has a three-star Michelin, and uh, when I met Kyle, was in a, at the Fat Dog, and he was a, the head of the research and uh, and development, creating all the new dishes, looking at technique. Imagine the, a great job what it is. You don't have to send food; you just research, research all day long. 
So he, he's an amazing chef and he has a lot of good points to bring about what sous vide brings to a, to a restaurant and in the kitchen. Um, we have people like, we have the CEO from Panera, you know, we, as Cuisine Solution, we sell um, all their premium turkey, beef. So how a, a sous vide item, what can bring to a, a, a 2,800 uh, uh, restaurant chain, 2,800 stores. Um, myself, I uh, invited uh, some chefs that I've been working for many, many years, Mark Erler from Hilton, the VP of Culinary, uh, Brad Nelson, Olivier Gopin. So we talk about the, um, you know, how do they react during the, uh, uh, the COVID, but also when do they start it? You know, because they're all chefs and they have different experience. Um, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be so much fun and, and it's free. So, you know, no, uh, no reservation. And then if you cannot see everything, you have 60 days to, uh, to watch everything if you register, uh, but it's going to be a, a great celebration. Yep. Um, One of the great highlights too is of course, um, International CV Day is the birthday of Dr. Bruno Gusseau, who founded CREA and really has been the resource for everybody regarding sous vide. Um, so there's a really great feature uh, on, on Bruno, um, the story of his life's work, and then also a sneak peek into uh, CREA, like the day-to-days um, uh, taste of what we do during our training, um, and then an introduction to the whole CREA team as well between the US and France. I think it's, um, it's gonna be very, very informative of people, because I, I know, 90% of the people out there really don't understand where CV fits or you know, where it came from and uh, how it works. And I think it's going to be great. If they go to international day.com, they can register and it's free. Like Gerard said, and you can watch it up to 60 days. There's so much going to be so much content on there. And I think I know for a fact that even me, I, I really didn't understand how big um, just with cuisine solutions, how much you guys do, you know, around the, the country and with different restaurants and, and, uh, you know, hotels and airlines and all that. That's one question I want to, are you going to bring up any of this stuff? How do you do all that stuff? <laughs> it, you know, the, the mass, you know, uh, you know, massive stuff that you do with the, with the just well, like, well, let's just take, take, for example, the sous vide egg bites from Starbucks. That's, <clears throat> that's, that's a cuisine solutions product. How do you make all those, those things? <laughs> We make a lot of it. We have seven lines uh, of, of uh, egg bite and um, we producing, uh, you know, Starbucks has close to 15,000 uh, coffee stores and they sell between 15 to 20 a day. Imagine the volume that we have to do every day. And then you can find them also at, um, at Trader Joe. We have a different flavor, of course, not the same flavor than Starbucks under the Trader Joe label. We have them at, under our label at uh, Costco. So those, uh, those volume, those are more like uh, different recipes. But to go back, how we achieve the volume, we try to create item we know will cross channel. You know, if you have a, an airline cut chicken, well, that's perfect for first class, but it's perfect for banqueting, it's perfect for restaurant, it's perfect for a lot of people. We don't have to create a recipe you know, like in old time when we started in France, we had Ville Blanquette, Beef Bourguignon. Oh, is my Beef Bourguignon better than yours? Whatever. Here, we create an ingredient who can go everywhere. So we get volume, we get better price, we get more consistency, people paying more attention about bringing us uh, the best product available because we're doing such a big volume, you know, and we are pretty dem demanding. So it's all those components together who allow us to grow so much faster today the, for the DAC. I mean, we create a couple items like the, uh, or we brought back some items that we used to do who were amazing, like the, uh, uh, we had a recipe with um, the barbecue ribs with a tamarind glaze. That's so good. And so we stopped doing that, what, 10 years ago? We said, we have to bring it back, but 90 or 90% 90 of uh, the DAC menu, it's already done. So we're just adding volume, volume, volume. Then when we add volume, then we had to add plants. That's why we just uh, opened a couple of months ago our 350,000 square feet. 
plant in uh, San Antonio. And, and our next, next expansion, we're going to be uh, doing a, a, a joint venture with Emirates and we're up, going to open in Dubai the first halal sous vide plant in the world. Mm. So, and we have some other plants. So sous vide is, it, it's really here to stay. It makes sense. You know, in, in old time, people used to bring half a, a cow in the kitchen, they had butcher, they had something. <laughs> I mean, you, everything come portion control. And now on top of it, with us, not only is portion control, but it's, it's, it's already fully cooked. Uh, you know, the, the way we used to work in any kind of kitchen, the way we work today is completely different and it will change. We still need to train some of our staff on item that the industry is not working. You know, we don't do veal shop or something like that. So the chef has still have uh, time to teach his, uh, his, his staff. Um, we were one of the chef, when we do those workshops, we had about 20 executive chef and we are one of our uh, hotel partners. And one of the chefs said, well, how are we going to teach the, um, the, the next gen generation how to cook? And, mm -hmm. and the chef said, well, guys, I want you to be honest. When was the last time in the last three months or even six months, you took 30 minutes or one hour to teach your cooks something new and something special, not something you put in the menu? Raise your hand. And it was 20 executive chef, not one. Mm -hmm. So he said, now I want you to use cuisine solution and I want you to buy product. And if so, your GM said, why are you spending this money to teach your chef? He said, well, you know, the, the corporate chef told me to do it and teach them, take the time because right now they don't have time. Everybody's busy. We don't have any, enough time. Nobody's taking the time. So if you have those tools of sous vide uh, to help you out, you should have time now to teach your team. How big are those tanks that you have in the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so, what I'm trying to get my mind around, you know, because, you know, at home, you know, I got a small one, I got a big one, but how big of a tank do I need <laughs> and how big of a circulator? <laughs> I'm sure they're, they're big industrial, you know, custom made things. Yeah, so they can go to uh, eight to 10,000 gallon. Wow. <laughs> so you can put, uh, you can cook up to whatever, three, 4,000 portion, depending on the size. If it's a 72 hours and you put less in a basket, but if it's a, a multi-pack with a 3.5 ounce chicken, then you can cook a lot of, uh, lot of product in way. And, and we have agitation all the time. We have um, a thermometer at the bottom and top. And then we have huge tank of uh, water. People think we're doing beer or we have, you know, big silo <laughs> like a silo of flour. And then they have, in each of those silo, you have one hot water, could be, you know, close to 200 degrees. One is room temperature and one is really cold to like uh, 33 degrees. And the computer, whatever recipe we put, take the temperature because you have, you have variation of temperature. You know, If we shoot for the product to be, one of them could be at 70. If we use a lot of them, temperature might go down or might go up. So the computer take the temperature. And then when the temperature arrive, it's exactly, if I ask 138, it comes at 138. But if you cook at home, what you do, you have your temperature, you put your product and you see your thermometer going down because your cold meat or your cold fish or your vegetable act like ice cube. It's going to chill mm -hmm. the water and then it takes time to come it back. So, yeah. okay, you have boiling water, you pour it, you do that. For <laughs> us, when it goes down one degree, the computer put more water, put more water, put more water. So the consistency is always the same as soon we put the product we put the product then we put the water comes in and it's always in agitation because agitation is very important so every single portion has the same temperature all over and uh, we can cook uh, we look at our curb because we print it out for uh, because we are usda and fda and we have to keep that in our record we we look what we call the curve of temperature time and temperature you see the product going up so and going Great and line. never moving. And the temperature <laughs> of what we call ambient temperature of the water, we can control and we can see it's perfect all the time. And then it's the... not Joe or Bill or something. <laughs> you put recipe 55 for this item, <laughs> right. enter, and, and it's going to be the same. So the consistency, you know, people said, oh, you bring your product are so great. That's, that's your forte. I'm like, it's one of our forte. But for me as a chef, number one is consistency. 
you don't want to bring your friend to a restaurant and say, oh, look, that's my favorite restaurant. And people are like, oh, I'm have overcooked chicken or something. Say, oh, that's your favorite. Yeah. Oh, no, no, usually it's better. <laughs> you know, it's embarrassing. And, and the wrong line cook was here today. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'd really love to take a tour of the, the factory one day and just see those big sous vide <laughs> circulator things. We can got. arrange that after COVID. <laughs> right now, yeah. even <laughs> me, like, you know, we don't let anybody in the a, in a plant. So anybody who doesn't have to be part of the production, we are very, very strict about uh, uh, safety um, because of COVID right now. And we were lucky. People said, how did you adapt? And I'm like, well, it was pretty easy because people are wash their hand. They remove their watch. They're covered completely head. You know, they're completely covered. They just have the eyes coming out. You know, we were 90% ready. We were always ready. Face masks, right? Face yeah. mask, yeah. everything. We, we were, you know, okay. Now we take temperature outside of the plant. We, we add a couple of things, but we were. Um, I don't want to say it's smooth because it's never smooth, but it, we were ready for for COVID. Yeah. Our, it wasn't. Our team was didn't, didn't take you. Didn't take you long to, uh, you know, do those extra couple steps. I'm sure. So, so going back to International sous vide Day, there's going to be a lot going on, um, and. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm probably going to be glued to my uh, to my computer all day that day. So, um, AJ, what do you got planned? Are you doing a presentation yourself, or? Yeah, we are. Um, we've got a 30 minute uh, sort of behind the scenes video uh, on Crea. So um, we've got some great material um, from our entire team about the real. Um, sort of core principles of the sous vide fundamental trainings that we do and a little bit of the history on sous vide um a, you know short uh interviews with all of our staff between france and the u.s um and then just kind of uh, a peek into what we're doing with consulting as well and what we see as the future of sous vide um, and then Bruno's video, of course, he, he speaks about that a lot as well. Um, one thing that um, we touch on too is, is another uh, second level training that we've started to do uh, called extraction, flavor fixation, and cryoconcentration, which um, I think you may have heard a little bit about or I spoke about it before, um, but it's really the next wave of uh, training that we're doing. And um, Similar to sous vide, it, it's really starting with top chefs. Um, so we don't necessarily, uh, we're, we're working towards uh, creating uh, cryo concentration, but the key is to use products that might be discarded or considered food waste, uh, trimmings of vegetables, um, or focusing on the functional properties of liquids. But it all starts with sous vide and the precise temperature cooking. So you get your core knowledge there, and then um, we, we're starting to train on those techniques. So it's really going to be a game changer. Yeah, I've seen some of that, and um, it does, it makes you uh, really go, oh, man, this thing can really do more than just cook a good steak, uh, you know. Um, so the International sous -Vide, uh, sous vide Day events, there's something there for everybody, the home cook, the professional chef, right. uh, the occasional, um, you know, dabbler and all that. So uh, to me, I, I, like I said, I, I can't wait to, to dive into it. Just like with the International Sous Vide Association, um, you know, we kind of target everybody. We, we kind of, you know, because there's people like me and Jason that are not professional chefs, we're home cooks, but we love to dive into this stuff and teach other people and kind of show people that you don't have to be a professional chef to use these concepts and methods and, and understand them and, and create great food for your home, even if it's just mixing it with barbecue and producing a better end product there or, or the convenience of being able to uh you know have it cooked later and then finish it and just you know there's so many different things that you can do with a sous vide that is not just is this the best way to do it well it doesn't always i mean the best way is always personal preference but if you can take in, and use these cooking methods and different things and put them together and make something completely different i mean it's how can it not be good right <laughs> That's right. It takes longer to uh, develop a, a cooking parameters to your test, but when you get it, you want to get it all the time. That, you know, sometimes, you know, you get with a high heat or something, you have different of temperature or yeah. something. Oh, last time it was a bit juicy or this one is, a, you know, whatever. But here, when you develop something, but it takes time. 
you know, uh, finding the right time. We will test a 12 hour, 13 hour, 15 hour, 16. You know, every, you know, the meat from France or, or from Australia or America, they, they don't cook the same. They've not been right. raised the <laughs> same. The breed is different. The age of the cow, do they eat grass fed? Do they eat corn fed? And that's what sometimes people don't understand. They're like, oh, give me a time and temperature. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I can give you something a right. basic, but I can assure you 90% of the time is not going to be perfect. I don't know your raw material. Right. I remember some chef who was telling me, well, I tried Thomas Keller's uh, cooking time is the wrong one. And I know Thomas Keller, he has a lot of integrity. He put exactly mm -hmm. what he was for his food, his right. raw material. And then when you start explaining that, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. I'm like, give it to me. I'll give you a time. And you said, Jora, you didn't give me the right time. It didn't work. So you really have to choose the same raw material and you have to understand, you know, the same muscle from a different cow, different age, different feeding, you're going to have completely different time. Even the muscle, you know, sometimes you say, oh, at 56, that's give you some discolor. No, you know, you have some muscle who have more, you know, different color when you look at it, you know, you have some muscle who are much more pale. So you cook them at a, uh, at 56 or 58 and they look like you cook them at 65 because uh, they are so pale and um, it's all those things and and that's the point I wanted to bring before at Crea when people say oh great I'm going to get all the time and temperature and we said no <laughs> we said, what do you mean I'm paying all this money you're not going to give me the time we said no we're going to teach you for you for your test we're going to show you what kind of temperature and time what does to the product and it's up to you to choose. Yeah. And, and it's like writing music. Do you want, like you said earlier, don't show me how to do it. You know, don't teach me uh, how to play a song. Teach me how to write my own song and my own right. music. And that's what we do at Crea. We really go much farther, say, here's all the component, all the different elements is going to help, help you. But the way I'm going to cook a, a muscle, you or AJ, we can choose. I like mine really rare. You might say, no, I like something more braised. And, and you have much more choice with sous vide to develop what you like, depending on your background, depending on who you grew up, depending what ingredient you use. It's so much more um, fun and, and, yeah. and much more present. And I want to add also, we have uh, John Taffer, you know, is, is part of oh, it. Good. And, and, you know, you see him on TV pretty. And it's, uh, he's, uh, he has really good point to bring to uh, the discussion about sous vide and it's pretty new to it because uh, a year, a year and a half ago, two years ago, he didn't know almost nothing about sous vide. So you right. can see from here to that is, he has some really good points. Yeah, I'm the same way. You know, three years ago, I didn't know what sous vide was, but I threw myself into it. And having great teachers like, you know, AJ and Jason and and a lot of the other people, even with Meathead, you know, we, we put our heads together a lot. Um, but I tell people this all the time, and this is one of the reasons why I like uh, Jason Logston's uh, Times and Temps online. It's a range. The, the Times and Temps is a range. And within those ranges, you can find your personal best, you know, so, you know, for medium rare, it's 130 to 137, anywhere in between there, you know, for a certain piece of meat, it could be two hours or four hours, you know, depending on the tenderness you want. I always try to tell people it, it, it's adjustable, but with sous vide, you have so many different, you know, combinations that can, you know, personally, you can take and, and it could be your personal best, but it could be totally different than the guy sitting next to you, you know? So yeah. use those ranges and within that range, you find the one that's perfect for you. You're absolutely right. I think a common um, misunderstanding about sous vide is a lot of people describe it just as low temperature cooking, but it's not really just low temperature cooking, it's precise temperature cooking. So when we do the training, um, it's not just you're getting times and temperatures like a chart that's going to work for every single product like Gerard was mentioning, unless your raw product is exactly the same season, density, thickness, you know, like unless it's exactly the same as the recipe that you're following, it can vary. So that's why um, in the course too, we teach um, monitoring core temperature as well, which 
understandably, not a lot of people do at home, nor would they have the tools for it, but it really is important and it's what professional chefs do. Of course, it's what we do in manufacturing as well. Um, but it's, it's not just low temperature cooking. There's different ways that you can do the cooking. We do three different methods in the course. Um, we always are probing the core of, um, at least one pouch out of each batch and, um, also are showing you the safe way to do it and every single category of food that we train in um, really delve into the scientific theory behind it and explain what happens at different temperatures with the meats depending on the color of the muscle and, and all of those elements that Gerard was describing as well. Well I for one can't wait to uh, participate in International Sous Vide Day. I know it's going to be great. Everybody, um, make sure you uh, at least pull it up, register that way. Even if you can't join in on Tuesday, you can go back for up to 60 days and watch them, internationalsousvideday.com. Also check out lacrea.com and cuisinesolutions.com if you want to find out more about those. AJ and Gerard, I really appreciate you guys being on. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on before we... Uh, no, Same thank you time. for having us. I mean, if, if uh, people join uh, International Sous Vide Day, uh, they learn a ton. Uh, and it's always good to, to, you can hear a lot of things from us, but when you hear people from different parts of the industry uh, saying how it helped them, it's pretty, um, it's, it's pretty educational this day. Yep. Definitely. Well, I appreciate you guys being on. I know you got another show to go do and uh, really, really thank you for being on it. And I can't wait to uh, participate. Thanks again. Thank hopefully you. Have you Pleasure as always. Thank you. Ha hopefully I'll have you guys on again soon. <laughs> Sounds good to but, us. All right. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care. Well, thanks again for joining the Fire and Water Cooking Podcast. I want to thank AJ and Gerard for being on once again. Make sure you check out internationalsousvideday.com to register so you can participate in all those festivities make sure you check out fireandwatercooking.com you can find all my podcasts the youtube videos you can find a copy of my fire and water cooking cookbook as well and make sure you check out lacrea.com and cuisinesolutions.com as well thanks again for watching and i'll see you on the next fire and water cooking podcast <laughs>